Jane Norman reporting. Well, the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, says the government will continue its efforts to introduce a code of conduct to ensure news companies are paid for their content shared online. Facebook blocked Australian publishers from sharing stories on its platform yesterday in response to the federal government's plan to force technology companies to pay for some news content. For more, I'm joined by Lizzie O'Shea, who's a lawyer and the chair of Digital Rights Watch Australia. Lizzie O'Shea, thank you so much for your time. Uh, this has received universal condemnation from Australian media organisations, from politicians and from members of the public. But will Facebook care? Well, I think they should care. I think their conduct has been disgraceful. Uh, they stripped content, not just from publishers, but everybody from the ACTU all the way through to organisations like SA Health, which is a particularly critical failure at a time at which we're about to roll out a vaccination program. So these actions by Facebook really are unforgivable. Uh, my concern, and I think a lot of concerns shared by uh, activists who are interested in this space, is that it's concealing what are serious problems with the COVID that's proposed which has precipitated this conduct so I want to be clear I think Facebook's behaved very badly and they deserve to be contemned for that but I think we shouldn't lose sight of the bigger problems that exist with the proposed code as put forward by the government. Yeah you wrote a piece um, yesterday questioning who wins from the media bargaining code and you say that really it's users who lose out. That's right. Uh, there's no doubt that traditional journalism has suffered as a result of the digital revolution, uh, as the result of advertising revenue moving away from traditional media organisations to large tech platforms. Uh, we've seen nearly 200 newsrooms shut uh, since January 2019. So really, that's also a function of, of COVID. The problem is, I don't think this code serves to address that problem. It sets up a system of private transfers between big tech companies and major media organisations with no guarantee that that money will be spent on the gaps that have emerged in mainstream media. And to my mind, that's a very significant failing. I'm all for finding ways to support public interest, investigative journalism, particularly in regional and rural areas where uh, it's been lacking. And the bushfires showed how critically important that infrastructure is to our well-being and safety. But I don't think this code really tackles those problems in the way that it should. And therefore, I think it deserves criticism. Yeah, you said this was a tech policy making driven by large news media companies who saw the opportunity to extract value from an unpopular opponent. Yes, absolutely. It's very easy to criticise Google and Facebook, especially when they behave in very dramatic ways and very harmful ways, like Facebook has done recently, but Google also threatened to withdraw search services in Australia. My concern, though, is that mainstream media organisations that are interested in having this code implemented so that they can gain a new source of revenue are essentially trying to get in on the business of surveillance capitalism that these big tech platforms profit from. Essentially, they're trying to align their interests with big tech platforms against users. So instead of seeing privacy protections for users who might seek to uh, read news online, in fact, what this code will do is not just uh, have an exchange of money, but also data about users who've clicked through to news content that will be provided by tech platforms to the media organisations, as well as information about changes to their algorithms so that these news organisations can optimise uh, their content to appear higher up. That only not only creates uh, da uh, news content that is, is optimised for clickbait, which I don't think is necessarily a good thing, but it also means these companies aren't interested in privacy reform that might protect users. They're aligned against the interests of users and they're left out of this discussion. Yeah, it's the algorithms that are super valuable. What about small and regional news organisations? Do they get anything from the code? Because they will suffer from a lack of traffic if Facebook continues with having news content blocked in Australia. Well, no. So it's unclear who will be able to access it or not. There are certain levels of, of uh, the certain criteria that you have to meet to be eligible to access this code. And this code then gives you a system of arbitration in the event that you can't come to an agreement as a news organisation with a tech platform. But there'll be many providers of really important content that don't meet the criteria. That could be small outlets. It could also be things like satirical uh, YouTube channels, for example, um, or newspapers. It could be lots of different investigative journalists who independently 
independently uh, put out a newsletter and the like that might not meet the criteria as a major news organisation, but in fact provide a really valuable service. So that kind of diversity question is again left out of this code. It really favours established large media organisations who've been driving this reform because they're looking for a new source of revenue as a result of the digital revolution. And that's, I think, not in the interests of the public. Um, the idea that Facebook will experience reputational damage as a result of blocking news in Australia, I mean, does it matter? We saw with the Cambridge Analytica scandal that many thought that that would sink Facebook or do real substantial harm to the company, and that never seemed to have materialised. Well, as somebody who's working in the space of digital rights for quite some time now, I think it's really interesting to watch how this has changed over the last few years. It used to be the case that regulation of big tech platforms was considered uh, somewhat outdated, a bit of a retro, retro attitude to the, the digital revolution. But in fact, now it's a very mainstream question. These companies are now facing regulation, whether they like it or not, and they're seeking to be involved in the discussions about what that regulation will look like. So that's happened here in Australia. The ACCC um, released a report looking in to these big tech platforms and how they should be better regulated. They made a, a range of recommendations of which this media code was just one. Uh, and I would like to see many more of those recommendations implemented because I think they're good ones. But also in the US, the home of these companies, I think we're going to see an administration uh, now under President Biden, which does take a more active attitude to things like antitrust when it comes to tech platforms things like privacy regulation, because there's now a clear problem with these companies' social licence to operate. And that needs to uh, result in law reform. Otherwise, people will continue to get very angry about this and seek to hold politicians accountable for it. Lizzie O'Shea, fascinating subject. Thanks so much for joining us.